Oh hey, and today we're going to be working on that boote. You may think that it was the Kardashian slash Jenner clan that first popularized the boote, but no, those 18th century ladies knew how to do it. Wit woo. She said let them make cake and by golly she delivered. Alrighty, so originally this video was intended as a I tried Morgan Donner's chemise at a rain tutorial, but as I was making it I realised that I didn't have the appropriate underskirt or bum pad, so this has kind of turned into I tried a Morgan Donner video and then went on a tangent video. Speaking of Morgan, I kind of feel like something's missing here. Hmm. Way better. So if you want to see me make a chemise à Lorraine, an underskirt 18th century style and a bum roll, carry on watching. Yeah, so for this amount of fabric, I think there's not enough room in my bedroom. Okay, way better. So the first thing that Morgan does is she takes her dress form and then she pins the front and the back. I've just basically folded the fabric here so this is on the fold and then these two edges are just the fabric folded over. Mine is actually way longer than her piece so I'm going to cut down here and then I'm going to cut the bottom as well to make the dress length. I'm not going to have mine shorter at the front and then longer at the back, I'm just going to have it all the same length for ease. So yeah, I repin the front and the fold and cut off the excess fabric from the back, side and front. Yep, you can take it to the barber shop if you want. And then I chopped off the bottom a bit longer than where I wanted it to be to allow for the hem. Then one at a time I pulled two scraps of fabric round the mannequin, one just under the boobs and one at the waist, and marked with my heat erasable pen the rough points as to where the ties needed to go. And we are already at a mistake. In fact, a mistake on a mistake, a meta mistake if you will. Now in Morgan's video she accidentally attaches her waist drawstring and then does the next drawstring below it instead of above, which meant that she had an excess of fabric at the top of her mannequin with which to create the collar for the dress. Now I did mine correctly and so did not have an excess of fabric at the top, so once I realised this I corrected myself and positioned the waist and under boob drawstrings lower down on the body. But before adding any of the drawstrings, I first sewed the front and back panels together at the centre back using the French seaming method. To deal with the raw edges at the centre front, I just folded them over twice, ironed them and then sewed them down. Okay, so now that I've French seamed, I am going to add in the channels, which are actually drawn on, but you can't see them very well. There they are. As per Morgan's instructions, I pinned the channels on with white cotton tape and then sewed just one side of the channels down at a time. This was because I was ambitiously planning to insert the drawstrings themselves and secure down the other side of the channel at the same time. But before I could add in the drawstrings, I actually had to make them, which I did by cutting out long strips of my white fabric and ironing them into bias binding shapes before sewing down the length of them to secure. Then I fiddled around trying to get the drawstring in the channel without accidentally sewing it down and surprisingly it was a success. I thank Bernadette Banner for the tip. After that I put the fabric back onto the mannequin and used this 2 in 1 water spray and fan to spray down the mannequin. This is to relax the cotton fibres and would make it easier to manipulate the fabric into the correct shape. To do this you just have to kind of keep tugging and repositioning the fabric until you're happy with it. Hey guys, it's the next day and I'm channeling 70s uh, Firefly Lane look. I just watched an episode and I really like the 70s bits. So I kind of wish the whole show was set in the 70s, honestly. But anyway, today I am going to basically zhuzh up the waistline because Morgan says that gravity will make the waist go down and you don't want that as it will make a ballooning effect. So I'm going to pull up the waist, I'm going to smooth the top of the neck area and then I'm going to pin where I want the neckline to be. Then I'm going to draw in the little neckline uh, cut out the armholes you're gonna see. Let's go. Okay, so I've shushed up the waist a little bit as much as I can but I can't do too much because her boobs are kind of in the way and I've just smoothed around the top here so you can see like that just so that I can get an idea of where the gathers should be going and I'm gonna actually just draw in where I want my neck line to be with my erasable pen so yes. This is a bit weird, but I basically put on this uh, little corset kind of style top 
bustier, whatever, that I made the other day that I like the neckline of, just so I can see whereabouts I should be drawing the neckline and also the armpits, because this armpit is like way bigger than what Morgan would suggest but just so that I can get the overall depth right. And then I'm gonna do my back a bit higher than this. I'm just gonna sort of trace around. Once I'd done that, I took the dress off of the mannequin and pinned on the top channel, which is the one that acts as a neckline. And then I measured 14 centimeters away from this channel, all the way around the top, and chopped that off to make my collared rough thing. After that, I sewed on the channel, which would have been lovely and uneventful, but I ran out of the cotton tape, so I had to make a makeshift channel out of a spare strip of cotton, which I overlocked on each edge and then attached on in the same way. I also enclosed the raw edge of that collar rough thing by just folding it in on itself twice and then sewing down. For the sleeves, Morgan actually explains that she cuts out a large rectangular shape with some shaping, but the idea of this kind of scared me, so I took a regular sleeve pattern from a UK size 10 pattern and then made it into a long puff sleeve by dividing the pattern into six and spreading it out until I was happy with the width. I go into way more detail as to how to do this in my Bridgerton sewing video, so i definitely check that out. I then curved the back so that it would have more fabric and this is what Morgan suggested to do. So I pinned to cut those sleeves out with the fabric folded so that I would have two sleeves and make sure you mark the notches so you know which side of the sleeve is the front and which is the back. Then I made my stitch length super long and did two gathering stitches in between the sleeve notches so that they would actually fit in the arm side. I then French seamed the length of the sleeves close to and then they looked like this. To hide the raw edges of the cuff, I just rolled and sewed again, very simple but gets the job done. Then I pinned on the sleeve channels where I wanted them to be, one at the midpoint between elbow and shoulder and then one at the elbow itself. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of just eyeballed this bit. But then instead of using the drawstring ties like I had for the body of the dress, I actually committed the huge sin of using elastic and was swiftly punished by the historical costuming gods because I cut the elastic way too small and now whenever I wear this dress my wrists and hands turn blue because of the lack of circulation. Karma, bitch. I sewed the channels down both sides this time but left a small gap where I will thread the elastic through later. Then you can put the sleeve head into the armhole so just pull up the gathering threads to make the sleeve head smaller and then pin all around from the inside until everything aligns. Do not be afraid to use a ton of pins. Next sew around your machine to attach. Finally you can take the elastic pieces you cut earlier and thread them through the four arm channels and sew up that little gap you left before. Only sight to see. It's the next day and I look kind of the same except for my jumper because I have the blue eyeshadow on again. It's a look, what can I say? So now the dress is done, but watching Morgan's video back, I think she's wearing some sort of like bum roll. Now, it was at this point in the project when I realised that the daily squats and protein powder consumption I had been partaking in wasn't going to cut it if I wanted appropriately sized 18th century derriere. So reinforcements were called in and I put myself in with plastic surgeon. Wait, what? No, I didn't. I made a bum roll. Okay, so what you first need to do is measure around your waist from the front of each hip bone round to the other side, and then use a French curved ruler like this to measure that length, plus a few more cm's just to be on the safe side, on some paper, which will then become your pattern. You then want to draw out a crescent moon kind of shape and divide the crescent up into four sections. These are going to become your stitching lines. Then round out each of these lines at the bottom to make a giant pink effect. I really just eyeballed this whole process and it kind of turned out fine in the end, so trust the process, man. After that, I pinned and cut out my pattern from this medium weight calico. I cut it on the fold and did this twice so that I would have two identical pieces. Then pin these pieces together and sew around the bottom curvy edge, leaving the top open so that you can flip it inside out. I actually find it useful to trim down the edges before flipping it so that there's less bulk. Then you need to iron this down, making sure to tease out all of the folded under edges and you can use scissors to jab these out if you so please. After that, remark the stitching lines with chalk or a heat erasable pen and sew down these lines. And then it's time for the fun part, stuffing. No, not the edible kind, what? Do you want to smell like bread? 
Yeah, me too, actually. Anyways, after you've stuffed the section so that they're full, sew around the edges at the top so that the stuffing doesn't try to escape while you're doing the rest of the steps. After that, I pinned and tacked on a super long bias binding strip to the top, which would both cover the raw edge of the fabric and be a waistband. And then it was done. Not the most pretty looking thing, but no one is going to see it anyways. I then cut out two super long strips of this blush coloured satin and sewed down the long edges so that I could flip it round to make a waist tie. Usually a chemise a la rain is worn with a ribbon sash round the waist and then smaller ties round the arms so I made these two and they elevate the look from nightgown material to royalty darling. Let me my game. Right so this is the third and final day for this project and today's task was the underskirt and also taking the final look photos hence why my hair is in brag curls and I'm in my pyjamas as you will see in a minute. But to make the underskirt I took a 3 meter length of plain white cotton medium weight and then cut it in half by ripping it on the grain. Then I measured from my waist to my ankle and cut one of the pieces this length and the other about 10 centimeters longer as this would be the back piece and needs to be a bit longer to accommodate the bum roll. I then laid the front piece on top of the back and pinned at the sides before overlocking the side pieces together but leaving about 20 centimeters at the top of this as this is going to be your closure section where the ties are going to be. Go over to the iron and iron the overlock seam towards the back and then while you're there fold up the hem two centimeters iron and then fold up another two centimeters and sew this down. After that, take the skirt back to the ironing board and fold in those four unoverlocked edges inward twice, iron, and then sew them down too. After that, you can lay the skirt down flat and make a box pleat in the very centre of the front and back. Then use whatever method of pleating you like best to pleat outwards from the box pleat. I use the fork method. You want the overall width to be around the same as your natural waist measurement. So for me, my waist is about 76 centimetres, which I then divided into four. And so the two sides on either side of the front and back box pleat had to be equal to 19 centimetres. Once I had done that for the front and back sections, which really took way longer than I expected, I sewed about one centimetre in from the top of the skirt to secure the pleats. And then I trimmed the excess fabric off so that I could neatly attach my cotton tape, which again, like with a bum roll, would act both to conceal the raw seam and also tie. 